Hi, sweet friends, and welcome to the Harbor Breeze Home Podcast. I'm Rita Joy, and today's podcast is especially for those of you who are struggling with a season of panic or know someone who is. This may trigger some difficult feelings for some of you, so be aware that the topic is in fact panic. (laughs) If that makes you feel uncomfortable and you're just not up to listening to it, I totally understand. Feel free to click off and listen to something that blesses your heart today. I promise it's all good with me and I'll chat with you later. So with that little trigger warning, we're gonna head on into today's episode. Welcome here. I've observed over time that there seems to be two types of people. One type finds comfort from those who empathize with what they're feeling. They feel relief in knowing that someone else has felt or gone through an experience similar to theirs and frankly lived to tell the story. It gives them comfort, hope, and courage. The other kind of personality is the kind that says, don't you tell me you know how I'm feeling because you can't possibly understand. Somehow they interpret people's well-meaning comments meant to comfort as somehow diminishing the pain they're going through. I understand that's a common grief response and I try to be sensitive to it. But to be clear, I'm the personality that finds comfort in hearing the stories of people who share that they've gone through similar situations. That's why I'm telling my story of panic today. My intention is to encourage those of you who may be experiencing a season of panic yourself or is walking the difficult path alongside someone who is. Just to be totally clear, I'm no means an expert on panic or panic attacks. I have absolutely no medical training to help with panic, nor can I offer professional advice if you're experiencing it. I'm only here to share what I did that helped me and open up the conversation so that others who experience panic attacks know that they're not alone. One of my absolute biggest pet peeves on social media is when someone is vague about some horrible situation they're going through that leaves you shaking your head and wondering what on earth is going on with them. I figure if you're going to hint at something on social media, you might as well spill the whole story for heaven's sakes. So here I am today being my own biggest pet peeve. I have to say from the get-go that I'm unable to share the details of what I'm going to refer to as the situation that led up to my season of panic. The truth is many, many individuals were a part of this situation I'll be referring to. Some of them know for sure and certain their part in it, and many, many others were a part of it without even knowing. And some of them listen to this podcast. After years of reflection, I realized there would be nothing technically or legally wrong with me sharing the details. However, in doing so, the potential of hurt to others could be great, and I in no way want to cause that ripple effect. And so we're going to go on with the beginning. I'll never forget my first panic attack. It happened after a very stressful week, and I had just hung up the phone from an extremely disturbing two-hour phone call. I don't remember the exact time, but it was quite late and well past my normal bedtime. I laid down in bed, and everything in my body seemed to spin out of control. My heart started beating frantically. My arms went numb. I couldn't seem to catch my breath, and my mind seemed to be covered over with a thick fog. I had a feeling of terror sweep over me that's really even hard to explain, and I could not stop crying. My husband came running up the stairs and into the room, and honestly, we both thought I was having a heart attack. We just happened to know an EMT who could get to our house faster than the local ambulance, so my husband called her, and she was at my bedside faster than you could blink. She immediately assessed the situation and very calmly told me, Rita, you're having a panic attack. Let's keep breathing and this is going to go away. She sat with us and talked with us until finally my heart slowed down. I was breathing normally and I felt somewhat normal again. She also told me that we needed to march ourselves into the doctor the very next day to get some help, which we did. I'll never forget that kind, concerned doctor that helped me that morning. 
He asked me what was going on and listened to our very abbreviated story of the difficult situation we were in. I remember sobbing my eyes out and having him look me in the eye and say, Rita, what you're experiencing is called a situational panic attack. You will not have to deal with this forever. Get yourself out of that situation and it will go away. Which, side note, easier said than done. (laughs) That sentence right there was one of the anchors that I hooked my hope into. You will not have these forever was something that helped me in the days, weeks, and months ahead. He then prescribed to me a medication that some people with panic attacks finds very helpful. I took it only once and had an extremely adverse reaction to it, so I didn't take any medication after that. Whenever I mention that I've been through a season of panic on my Instagram stories, I get a flood of messages like not many other topics get, to be honest. There are so many people struggling with panic attacks in silence because they think no one else is. I'm here to tell you, sweet friend, you are not alone. I understand how it's so much easier to tell a complete stranger who lives in a different country that you're suffering from panic attacks than your friend across the street. Because I don't know about you, but when I was having one panic attack after another, I felt like I was a complete crazy woman. And seriously, I have so much more empathy for people who suffer with mental illness. As someone who thought I had a fair bit of common sense built into my DNA, having panic attack after panic attack day in and day out made my brain feel so muddy and confused that although I knew the thoughts I was having were very irrational, they seemed oddly real to me. One person on Instagram asked me this, I'm struggling so much with panic attacks right now. I know it may be Snoopy to ask, but could you please share with me some of the things that helped you? So that's what I'm going to do today. They probably aren't deep or scientifically researched, but they're the practical things that I did that helped me get through. The situation leading up to my season of panic had absolutely nothing to do with problems at home. My relationship with my husband and family was really good, and my husband helped me every step of the way during this time. He was also processing the same situation at the same time. Of course, panic attacks were a new reality to both of us, and he was trying to learn how to help me as I struggled. We laugh now at the first thing we learned together. Here it is. It doesn't help to tell someone who's in the middle of a panic attack it's okay, don't panic. (laughs) Those words, don't panic, just bring on more panic as you try desperately to stop stop the panic that you don't want to be panicking about. After one big episode, I was finally able to catch my breath and looked at him and said, I don't think you telling me not to panic is going to work for me. He responded, yeah, I caught that too. But here are some things that did help me. One, as I mentioned before, fighting down constant panic made my brain feel very clouded and confused. There were certain irrational thoughts that consistently triggered panic, yet I somehow kept thinking they were reality. So I decided to try to control the irrational thoughts by writing down the truth. I sat down with my husband one day and voiced every thought that caused panic as a question to him and he answered me with the truth. I then wrote down all those truth statements and even posted some on the post-it notes by the phone. Then, when my mind started to travel down those irrational thoughts road, I would head over to those post-it notes and read the truth. That helped immensely. Two, the other thing that helped me was my faith. Everyone's faith journey looks very, very different, I realize. So keep in mind, this is what worked for me. You might need to grab hold of some other faith truths to help you. But when I was in the throes of a horrible panic attack, I would repeat over and over in my mind the truths that I learned as a toddler in Sunday school. Jesus loves me. He'll never leave me. Although I would never wish a season of panic on my worst enemy, I must say, it strengthened my faith and I felt Jesus with me during the darkest days. 
Three, middle of the nights were particularly difficult during this season of panic. I would often wake up knowing panic was just about to take hold again. My husband encouraged me to sit up and turn the light on and wake him up when that happened. Then he'd say, what are you thinking about now? Usually it would be one of those odd, irrational thoughts that would be starting to take root in my mind. And if I could voice it, he could help me process the truth before panic set in. Number four, physically moving away from the place where the panic attacks started was a huge step in the healing process for me. I'm going to interrupt this story for a few minutes to share with you a person who has been a huge encouragement to me before, during, and after my season of panic. Layla Palmer is a blogger and Instagrammer with a channel called The Lettered Cottage. When I was going through my season of panic, she bravely started sharing her own story of living with panic. It gave me so much hope and courage and made me feel so much less alone. Layla has now written a book about her journey called Coming Home that is set to release November of 2023. You can pre-order it now on Amazon and I'll link it in the show notes. I can't wait to read it. Okay, now back to the story. I'm going through some of the specifics of how I coped with panic and I'm on number five. The time I spent struggling with panic attacks was the one and only time in my life I actually had no appetite or interest in food. I figured that since I wasn't really excited about eating any food at all, I might as well jump at the opportunity to try to learn some new healthy recipes. That was a super helpful thing. I got onto the MyFitnessPal app and started experimenting with different recipes. It gave me something to set my mind on that was good and helpful and provided a wonderful diversion from the thoughts that caused panic. Number six, I listened to more music then than I ever listened to before in my life. I found some contemporary worship music channels on my iPad and just listened and listened. I put together a song list of songs that were super helpful to me at this time. What we were going through was really a season of grief and loss, so I call that song list for the brokenhearted. I've added to it songs that other people have told me have helped them while they are grieving as well. I'll put that in the show notes if you'd like to listen to it. Number seven. Over time, my panic attacks lessened and lessened, but they would still rear up every now and then. A good friend of ours recommended that I go see a counselor, which I did. I would say that seeing a counselor was one of the most healing parts of my panic story. It was there that I was finally given the freedom to tell my story to this stranger who didn't have a clue who I was talking about. And frankly, I've never even seen her since the day I left her office. Being able to finally tell my story was a huge part of the healing journey, and she pointed out some things that were super, super helpful to me. First of all, she explained the medical reason why I was experiencing panic attacks. My body had already been under years of stress, and I was physically exhausted. Then, when a shocking new development in life happened, my body just couldn't absorb the shock. It makes complete sense, she said. As my body had a chance to rest and recuperate, it started to learn how to cope without panic again. The other thing she taught me was that I was skipping a vital step in the process of processing the grief I was going through. You know, it's okay to be angry about what happened. And in fact, you can't skip over that part. I was absolutely shocked. All that time, I kept focusing on the fact that I didn't want a root of bitterness to grow in my heart, so I was desperately trying not to feel any anger at all. She told me that just wasn't going to work. I'm so confused, I told her. How do I do angry right? She laughed and said that question really couldn't be answered easily, but she did recommend that I go home and start writing in a journal everything that had happened and write all the anger out she said. I remember thinking, okay, she said I could be mad. So I admit, I did find great relief in being really, really mad. I'd held a lot back for a long time. I wrote furiously for days and then I'd had enough. 
being angry was quite exhausting and I was over it. (laughs) That writing was, in fact, very therapeutic. And for anyone concerned that's listening, don't worry, I destroyed it all. It's actually been years now since I've last experienced a panic attack, thankfully. There's just one thing that seems to be a trigger at this point, and that's the thought of going back to the place where it all started. My counselor warned me that that just might be the case. You may never be able to go back there, she said, and that's okay. Healing and forgiveness is not measured by that standard. So I just steer clear and all seems to be well. I realize each person's story is so unique and different and yours might look completely different than what I've just described today. My hope and prayer though, is that in the telling of my story, you will find encouragement and know that you're not alone. I realize that some people could actually hear the details of the situation we went through and say, good grief, what on earth is wrong with that woman? Other people have gone through much worse. Is it really that big of a deal? I would have to agree with part of that statement. Yes, people have gone through much, much worse and lived to tell the story. However, I also can't deny that this situation was the most difficult situation I've ever encountered in my life. My husband and I navigated the days of it together and processed deep grief and sadness during what we refer to as the darkest valley year of our lives. Valley years are usually marked by some sort of grief and loss. However, it isn't limited to only the physical death of a loved one. Some of the deepest hurts inflicted in our lives are by individuals who are very much alive and well. As someone who had already experienced a fair bit of loss of loved ones by then, I was completely unprepared for the tsunami of grief this particular situation caused. Are you going through a valley season in your life right now? Maybe you've recently lost a loved one or a relationship ended in betrayal or some other situation has left you feeling like the days are dark and there doesn't seem to be any light appearing at the end of the tunnel. If that's you, I want to encourage you with some words that have encouraged me over the years. When we were in the throes of this situation, I had a very kind gentleman look me in the eyes and say this, Rita, right now this hard thing feels like the whole book of your life. I get that. But you'll find over time that one day it will just be one chapter of that book, then one paragraph, and eventually one sentence. Eight years have now passed since our valley year, and I've now found his analogy to be so true. Maybe I'm not quite at the sentence stage yet, but I'm certainly at a paragraph. I find that very encouraging. If you too are going through a valley time in your life, I'm so very sorry. I'm praying for you today, and through this microphone, I'm sending you the biggest hug ever. And an added word of encouragement, once we crested the hill of our dark valley year, we were blessed beyond words to discover a meadow with lush green fields and a few daisies smiling at us. We were told that a year would give us new perspective. It did. Now that a few more years have gone by, I can look back at that situation with actual gratefulness, not in how it happened necessarily but the result of it rescued us from difficulties we were unaware of and led us to something much, much better. And as a final reminder, please be sure to seek some professional help if you think you are experiencing panic attacks. I've since learned there's all kinds of physiological and medical reasons that people might experience panic attacks. And guess what one of them is? Yep, menopause. Just throwing that out there if it helps anyone. So that's it for today's episode of the Harbor Breeze Home Podcast. And because I'm feeling a little cheeky today, I just have to say, don't panic. Everything's going to be okay. (laughs) Until next time, friends, have a great day. Toodaloo!